Chapter 11, Part 1 Crystals, Ions, and Solutions Crystalline solids, what are they? A crystalline solid is one whose atoms or molecules are arranged in a definite pattern. Examples are salt, sugar grains, sparkling gemstones, etc. These are crystalline solids. Diamond, for instance, is the hardest known substance, and it is a strong example of a crystalline solid. Amorphous solid. An amorphous solid is one whose constituent particles show no regularity of arrangement. Examples are glass, plastics, wood even, etc. These are amorphous. The word amorphous itself means not regular. Where crystalline solids are amorphous, which means regular. Amorphous, not regular, morphous, regular. Solids. Crystalline solids fall into four classes depending on how their particles are bonded together. And these are the four. Ionic solids, covalent solids, metallic, sol uh, metallic solids, and molecular solids. Ionic crystals. Ionic crystals are formed by attraction between positive and negative ions that are present in the material. An example of sodium chloride. When sodium bond chemically with chlorine, we get sodium ions and chloride ions that are in this regular pattern. That is the way nature makes sodium chloride. Clo uh, covalent crystals. Covalent crystals are formed when pairs of electrons are shared between adjacent atoms, such as diamond, of course, silicon, and germanium. A crystal, crystal lattice of diamond with this regular pattern and space, lots of space between the carbon atoms, but still, this, this a zigzag electrical, this pattern makes this a very strong uh, material. This is also carbon, but the layers make graphene, uh, a graphite, a fairly weak material. Uh, Buckminster fullerene is another uh, isotrope of uh, carbon. Metallic bonding. So we've now looked at ionic bonding, covalent bonding. The third we will consider is metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is formed by a gas of electrons. We call it a gas, different than, say, gas, oxygen gas. But it's a sea of electrons that moves freely, freely through the assembly of metal ions that form a solid material. The electron gas, as it's called, pitcher of the metallic bond, accounts nicely for the properties of metals such as conducting heat and conducting electricity. Molecular crystals, the fourth of the, the fourth of the four kinds. Some liquids and solids are formed through the action of what are called van der Waal forces named after the Dutch physicist Johannes van der Waal. These forces are much weaker than ionic that we've already talked about, covalent that we've talked about, and metallic. So the molecular uh, forces that due to van der Waal forces are the weakest uh, of the uh, four kind. Further, van der Waal's interaction Polar-polar interaction occurs between polar molecules whose 
posit whose positively and negatively charged ends cause them to line up with the ends that are opposite charge adjacent. Okay. An illustration. You may think of the water molecule with the positive end of the oxygen, I'm sorry, with the negative end of the oxygen, the positive ends of the two hydrogen. You may look at it as a simple model as this structure this end of the structure being more positive and this end of the structure being more negative. So therefore, you can think then that nature will bind, uh, this is a physical bond, that the positive of this uh, end gets attracted to the negative of this end. So you can have this triangular structure. You can also have this linear structure somewhat positive, negative, positive, negative, on and on. Or you can have this lateral structure or this juxtaposed structure, a, a negative with a positive there, etc. Van der Waal interaction continues. Now you can have polar, nonpolar attraction occurs between a polar and a nonpolar molecule because the electric field of the polar molecule calls separation of charges in the nonpolar molecule first. Once it causes that separation, then the opposite two will attract. The oppositely charged end of the polar and the nonpolar molecules now produce an attraction, as shown here. So water molecule is this situation. Okay, here is the case then of polar nonpolar interaction. This structure is already polar positive here, negative there, and it's, set, and it's some distance from a structure that has both positive and negative ions. But as you bring the first one closer, you, you get a redistribution. More positive ions in the first structure are pulled towards this negative end, pushing the, the negative one there. And now there's an attraction for this structure and that structure. Okay, um, negative, um, I'm sorry, nonpolar, nonpolar attraction occurs between nonpolar molecules, electrons at any given moment are distributed unevenly. So random unevenly distribution will call nonpolar to be attracted to nonpolar. This creates temporarily charged mole molecules whose adjacent ends having opposite signs results in attracted forces. Now, so here are the four uh, basic types of uh, crystalline solid, covalent, ionic, metallic, uh, and molecular. This is a depiction of the way we vi visualize the, the bonding between the parts and shared electrons for covalent, electrical attraction for ionic, electron C for metallic, and van der Waal forces for the molecular. Now, shift gears briefly. Let's talk about solvents and solutes. In a solution, the substance present in the larger amount is called the solvent. And the other, there will always be an other, the other is called a solute. When sugar is stirred into water, the sugar is the solute and the water is the solvent. Concentration. Concentration of a solution amount of solvent is the amount of solute in a given amount of the solvent. That's the what we call the concentration. Solubility. The solubility of a substance is the maximum amount that can be dissolved in a given quantity of a particular solvent at a given time. And lastly, saturation. The saturated solution contains the maximum amount of solute present at a given temperature. And now supersaturation uh, solution 
contains more dissolved solute than is normally possible at a given temperature and is usually unstable. <coughs> Excuse me. The solubility of sodium chloride is illustrated here. <coughs> Excuse me. We have an unsaturated uh, solution of 30 grams of sodium chloride in, in, in water. Now we have a saturated solution of 36 grams in sodium chloride, of sodium chloride in 100 grams of water. It is saturated. If you put more than 36, only 36 will go into solution. The other four grams will be undissolved in the bottom of the container. <coughs> solubility versus temperature. The solubility of a solid increase with increase in temperature. The solubility of a gas in a liquid decrease with increase in temperature, just the opposite. The boiling point of a solution is, high, is usually higher than that of the pure solvent and its freezing point is lower. Polar liquid, a polar liquid is a substance whose molecules behave as if negatively charged at one end and polarly charged at the other end. Water and alcohol are both polar liquids. And here we are, an, an illustration of the polar molecule once again. A nonpolar liquid, on the other hand, have uniformly charged distribution. Gasoline and oil are all nonpolar liquids. Polar liquids dissolve only ionic and polar covalent compounds. Nonpolar liquids dissolve only nonpolar covalent compounds. Sugar, for instance, will dissolve in water. This is a depiction of the larger sugar molecule. Water, notice because it becomes polar, the sugar molecule is polar, the water molecule is polar, they will uh, dissolve or mix with each other. Here is an illustration then of, of water uh, in, in a fatty uh, solution will not mix. If you put water in, in oil, they will not mix. The oil here is floating on the top. Its density is less than that of water. But if you put uh, oil and gasoline together, they will mix. A fatty substance such as oil and gasoline, they will mix. That's the end of this section, young people.